Yes. Can I request one of you all to lead us in prayer as we begin this session? Yes, Jeffina, please go ahead. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the beautiful class we are about to have. God, we invite your Holy Spirit to guide you through everything that we learn. Help us to open our mind and heart and listen to it and um, to follow it throughout our life, not just listening to the class right now, but keeping it in our heart and remembering the things that we learn each and every day so that we can live like you down here on this earth, Jesus. Be with us and guide us, fill us with the knowledge, understanding and wisdom that we need throughout this class. That I place each and every one of my classmates in your hand, give them the good network connection that they need and the help that they need and the uh, right mind to listen to the class and to do great things for you in jesus name i pray amen thank you jeffina for leading us into a time of prayer well as we begin this session on christian history and missions what are the things that we have covered so far can we look into it What did we cover so far? What did we learn from the session till now so far? Book of Acts, life of Paul, his missionary journey. Yes, we went through the uh, what is revival to start up with as we are going through studying through this book, revival. Uh, revival visitation and moves of God. We see what is revival. And we understand that revival is something that is uh, bringing what has been dead, bringing something that is dead back to life. And we also see time and again how the Lord is raising people and reviving them. And how this fire of revival been caught up from one place to the other. And also we see the main requirement for the revival to be birthed in a person is the urge, uh, urge or the quest that a person has, that a person could carry. Just give me a minute, please. Thank you. Sorry. So when we say the thirst or a quest should be within us is this is what something that is needed where we can see God more of him in us so that we can have the Christ likeness in us. And we can pray like how the psalmist says in Psalms 85, 6, like, Will you not revive us again, Lord? Revive us again. That thirst should be in each of us. And with that, we moved on to different seasons of revival. And we saw how time and again, um, the Spirit of the Lord moves on people. And we see people being convicted of their sins, coming to the knowledge of God, understanding who God is, His holiness, and repenting of their sin and turning to God. We see more of that in the book of Acts. That is when we started to see how uh, the Lord moves among the people. And what happens exactly in the time of revival? What can we expect in revival? So what we can expect? There were a few points that we shared in this. Anyone from the class, what happens or what can we expect from revival? A great revelation of who God is, has been revealed to the people. 
then we see uh, the revelation of the spiritual truth has become real to us. It's no more, it's in theory or word, but then God makes his presence so tangible to us. And then he increases the passion, the zeal over people of God towards the spiritual things. And we also see there's a uh, there's a gathering of the unsaved people coming to the knowledge of Christ. And we also saw the supernatural manifestation becomes real. There's a great, mighty one, signs, wonders, and miracles that happen during the time of revival. And we also see a large mass of people being transformed, or the community or city or state being transformed. Transformed, and they come to the knowledge of Christ. Lastly, we also see there's an equipping of the word, equipping the saints of God, the ministers of God. And we see new ministries being birthed, churches being planted. And this revival fire has been carried out from one place to the other. Now, you may wonder, why are we repeating all these? There are new joinees with us. People have joined during this past week, online e-learning and on campus. So that is why we are just refreshing all those. And we see there's a great and urgent need of the church in our life because the power of the Lord is working in and through us. So here we are not uh, looking at a specific method or the things that need to be improved, but then we are allowing the Spirit of the Lord to move in and through us because in each revival we see the Spirit of the Lord work in a unique manner. We cannot put God into a box and expect Him to walk or move only in that way. But then here God has different ways through which He moves. Then in chapter 2, we uh, covered last class on the journey through the book of Acts. Like how in Acts chapter 2, we see a group of people of about 120 people, along with his, uh, <clears throat> Mary, the mother of Jesus, and disciples and other apostles were gathered together. And these people were normal, uneducated people. After the death of Jesus, they were filled with so much of fear. Some of them want to get back to their work, get back to their business. They don't want to do anything with Jesus. But then they all come together with one cord in mind and pray in that upper room. So what happens? What happens? When they prayed with one cord, and mind, and there was a continuous prayer. Something happens there. The power of the Lord moves in that place. It comes as a rushing wind. That's what we read in Acts chapter 2. There's an, uh, there's an outpouring of a spirit in that place. And we see there are two key ingredients that is that is needed for this outpouring of the Spirit that took place in the book of Acts, chapter 1 and 2. We see that the people were with one cord and mind, they were unity, they were uh, united with one heart and mind, and they were praying. There was a, uh, a second point was they were continuous in a collective prayer. When they prayed, the Spirit of the Lord, the Word of God says, the Spirit of the Lord came like a rushing wind. First there was a sound, and then they could experience the rushing wind. And then they saw the tongues of fire resting upon each one of them who were present in that room. And then later we see in chapter 2, verse 12, we see they were these normal, uneducated people trying to do something that amazed the people who were there. Everyone, when they looked at them or they heard the way they spoke, amazed them. They were perplexed. Some of them were shocked to know what was happening there or to see what was happening there. So what happened in Acts chapter 2? What was all about that sound of a rushing wind or what is to do with that tongues of fire descending from heaven upon each disciples? What happened to them? What was the outcome of this effect? Anyone from the class? 
what was the outcome of this? The outcome was people were ministered the word of God. Peter was filled with boldness and he spoke to them about Jesus. What amazed is in one day, 3,000 people received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And something very amazing happened there that each one could understand what Peter shared. Each one could understand in their own language. We see the Spirit of God move there, Spirit of understanding, that each one could understand what Peter was sharing in their own language. And they convicted of sins. They could receive Jesus whom they mocked and they crucified on the cross. Now they could receive him as their Lord and Savior. They could accept him that, yes, he is the true <coughs> He is the true Son of God. So the purpose of our study is to know that the Holy Spirit will do as He desires in each outpouring of a Spirit or in each revival. So what we need to do is expand ourselves, create that urge within us where we can look up to him and ask, God, I need more of you and me. Increase that urge in me, increase that quest in me, just like how the disciples yearned for more of you. I want to yearn. I, I don't want to be satisfied in the place where I am, but I want more of you. So the more we look at that, as we study the book of Acts, I think, this urge will only develop or this urge will only increase within us. None of us, wherever we are, despite our situation and circumstances, we are not going to be satisfied the place where we are or with what we are doing for God and for His people in the ministry. We are going to step up, step into much greater things what God has in store with us. Growing in the Lord is a process. There is no time that God can say, like, okay, you have reached your place, you can settle down now. No. God wants us to upgrade ourselves, upskill ourselves, grow more deeper and deeper in intimacy with Him and do much more for God what is expected from Him. Because this is what Jesus did through His disciples. The Great Commission is all about doing God's will, carrying the fire, carrying the gospel of God to the ends of the earth. This is what the scripture says, the harvest is huge and the laborers are few. Now God is talking to each of us, each of his laborers. Just like Isaiah, he called up Isaiah, he's calling us, can you do something more? than what you are doing right now. Each of us here are not by chance. We have been called and we are here for a purpose. As we all studied in the first year of fulfilling God's purpose, yes, there is a call, there's a purpose. God wants to fulfill that, His desire in and through us. God is ready, but here, are we ready? The question is, are we ready? If you are ready, seek God. Expect much more from Him. We should be like His disciples. We should be like them. That they were never rested. Every step they grew much closer to God. They had this desire, Lord, what is next? What is that I need to do for you? What is my next assignment? Not being comfortable with where we are, but increasing ourselves, upgrading ourselves, moving out of a comfort zone and asking God, seeking Him what we need to do. So as we prepare ourselves to see God, we need to just pray like what the psalmist prays, Lord, revive me that I can be set for the revival. So as we pray, 
let's journey through the book of Acts. Here we see the book of Acts has been divided in three sections. The first eight years highlights the outpouring of the Spirit of what brought a change in a community. And we also understand that how the church looked like, how the church was birthed first in the Antioch, and how this church was revived, and how uh, through the Antioch they were first called as Christians, and how the, the neighboring cities or the towns were impacted by the Spirit, and how the church was birthed in the neighboring cities. With that, the second section is what happened in the next 10 years. So in next 10 years, we see that how this one community that was sparked with the revival fire, how it went out and raised other several communities and churches and brought a revival in them. We also see um, how this revival fire spread across the city and country. Now, the third section is we are going to look into the next 20 years as it gives us a great insight into a life of a man called Paul who had an encounter on the way to Damascus by Jesus himself and how he was revived and how he carried this revival fire. So those who are new, as you can download the book, download the notes that is available online and also for the e-learning students, you can download the notes and we are on page 10. And then we see uh, the first eight years, how the church was birthed through the individuals and how it was impacted the neighboring uh, places and towns of Antioch. And then next 10 years, what happened? The revival fire spreads. We covered from Acts 8 to Acts 13. There we saw how uh, God raised the believers to be strong in the word and spirit. And this revival fire was so contagious that it carried from one place to the other. And now we are on page 14. The next 20 years. It talks about Paul was encountered on the way to Damascus. So the timeline for this may be AD 48 to 68 AD, and it covers from the book of Acts, Acts 13 to Acts 28. So the book of Acts focuses here on Paul, the man who was persecuting the Christians. And he was on the way to Damascus to kill the Christians. He had this great mission and he was so much focused in doing what he was doing. So what happened? Paul encountered Jesus on the way to Damascus. So maybe he was around 29 to 33 years of age. And this one encounter of Paul changed him inside out the passion that he carried he was so zealous to kill the christians it became the opposite now now he's become zealous to share the word of god just one encounter one encounter yes it may be the dramatic encounter of him but that that one encounter he heard the voice of jesus he heard the voice of jesus The scripture does not tell us about anything else. But here he had one encounter which transformed him. The man who was stubborn, the man who was so violent, here he's submissive. He's been directed to the prophet Ananias. And here he's been restored. His sight has been restored back. And here he's become a new man, a new creation in Christ. And he did not stop for that. 
whatever the encounter that he had the revelation that he had at that moment he started to preach we see that in acts chapter 9 we see that paul preached in the synagogue of damascus for a short time he shared his testimony he shared his uh, tangible experience that he had with god this is what even the disciples did. The Gospels were written. Whatever experience that the disciples had with Jesus, they started sharing it later with everyone. The same thing Paul is doing it right now. So what do we learn from you? Start with your experience, your encounter with God. Share it with others. The spark of that revival that was birthed into Saul or Paul did not stop him. Did not stop him to know and understand the complete theology of God for him to go step out and share. He just shared what he knew, what he could understand, what he experienced. And that had power. That had power. Because it is God and man together. The encounter was there. And he shared that. And that had the power. You and I, I'm sure we have many encounters with God. Share it with others. That could spark the fire to another person. To seek God. Then later we see how Paul went to Arabia. Um, for a short time and then you see again you see how he started to preach to the Gentiles Paul returned to Damascus for the rest of the three years period he continued to preach in the synagogue there one more thing that we need to notice here is whichever place Paul went he first went into a synagogue to share the word When he was refused and sent out of synagogue for many reasons, he carried that gospel and went to the Gentiles. And here the Gentiles received the word when Paul shared. During the time of preaching for so when uh, Paul was preaching, there were a lot of persecution that he encountered. But what we can learn from his life is he never stopped. He never stopped sharing the gospel. He never stopped preaching. Or he never stopped demonstrating the power of God. His preaching was always like word and the power of God. Demonstration of the power of God accompanied him wherever he went. So there were a lot of people against him, like the Jews and others were against him. They also stoned him to death. But nothing stopped him. Whenever he saw a door being closed in one place, he moved on to another city. He moved on to another city. And that's how the missionary journeys were birthed. So what happened when Paul encountered, he immediately shared his testimony with his disciples and other people. Then he faced a persecution for which he had to go back to Jerusalem. And he stayed there for uh, a, a few years, three years. And then after that, he goes back to Arabia. And there is a silent here. We don't know what happened to Paul in his life. It may be um, there is no uh, uh, exact time period where he was very silent. The scholars say that it may be six to ten years that he was quiet. There is uh, no reference of what Paul did during this time. But later, what happens when the church in Antioch, that is in Syria, grew and Barnabas was leading this church and he, need, he needed help. And all of a sudden, he was remembered about Paul of Tarsus. So what happens? 
Barnabas goes to Tarsus, finds Paul, and brings him back to Antioch to minister along with him in the church that was growing. So they served together for, for about over a year. And then we see what happens in Paul's life from different perspectives. We don't get to see in the New Testament more about the other leaders, but then we get to see about Paul because he had this revelation from God and he had written letters to, to different places where he planted the church through his missionary journeys. And through those letters, we can we get to know the different perspective of Paul. Paul as a leader, as an apostle. So we look at Paul from the perspective of being the carrier of God's spirit, a carrier of revival. So what can we learn from Paul's life and his ministry? How? The Spirit of the Lord can move through an ordinary person like him. One encounter with God changed Paul's life. And that can be the same with you and me. Just that one encounter of God can change our life. We may not understand what God is doing through our life, or we may not know our end plan, but we need to be assured that God knows our end from the beginning. We can trust God with our life, just like how Paul trusted. God reveals to us step by step as we trust and as we journey with Him. God reveals His plan. The vision that God gives to us can only expand and get better. Here we see Paul moving from the Antioch church. It became as his home church. Antioch in Syria has become a home church for Paul now. And here we see in the book of Acts that Paul takes three missionary journeys. And all the three journeys we started from Antioch of Syria. So we learn about Paul's first missionary journey from Acts 13 to 14. We see how um, Paul takes this journey uh, through different places. Starts from Antioch in Syria and he goes up to another Antioch that is in Pisidia. Here we see some of the uh, uh, history given of that place. So Paul's first missionary journey lasted for about two years, where he traveled about 1,200 miles. And uh, we also see Barnabas and John Mark, his cousin, that is Barnabas' nephew, John Mark, accompanied Paul in the first missionary journey. So what happened? So from Antioch, they traveled about 16 miles through the seaport and ministered to people there. And then they moved on to different places from Antioch, Syria, to they went to Seleucia. From Seleucia, they went to Salamis. From Salamis, they went to Paphos. And from Paphos, they went to Perga. Again, from Perga to Antioch of Pisidia. And then, you know, they went on to different places from Antioch of Pisidia to Iconium. They traveled about 18 miles from there to Lystra. What happened? As they traveled from one place to the other, there are some incidents that happen in few places. Like at, the, at Perga, the Jews, who they were few, they were, okay, they were, the Jew, they were, uh, when Paul preached, there were few Jews who believed in his word. And they, were, they went along with Paul's teaching. But there were others who did not believe in the gospel of the word that Paul was teaching. So they came against Paul. So they started to persecute Paul and Barnabas, and they expelled them out of the city. And we see Paul and Barnabas go to a different place called Antioch of Pisidia. 
and there they started to preach. As they shared the gospel there, even there they faced a lot of persecution. And they moved on to Lystra. And Lystra, there was a crippled man, a man who was lame from birth, was healed. And there were many who believed through this one incident, many believed on what Paul was teaching. Now, what happened? The Jews who did not believe in Antioch and Pisidia and in Iconium, they formed a gang together. They came all the way to Lystra and they stoned Paul to death and they dragged him out of the city. So we see that in the book of Acts chapter 14 when we come down to 20 and 21. So what happened? They were good in stoning in those days so they know that is the person dead or alive. But what the scripture says is, the scripture says that the disciples gathered around him and they prayed. And next day morning, Paul, re, I mean, Paul got up and went into Derby to share the word. So what would have strengthened Paul? He's still in the human nature. He's not in the glorious body. If somebody is stoned to death, sure, there were a lot of bruises on him. But what strengthened him within to get up and move on? He's still in the human body. I'm sure he would have gone through the pain what you and I could go through when we are being hurt. The pain would be the same. But the fire that he carried within him, the very encounter that he had with God, the revelation that he's been receiving from God was much greater than the pain and the weakness and the hurt that his physical body could bear or endure. So there was a much greater strength was in his spirit. So what you and I should look in here, we need to ask God, God, enlarge our spirit that we may grow stronger in our spirit. Where a spirit man becomes stronger than a physical body or physical man so what no matter what happens to our body but our spirit man is so stronger that he gives strength to our physical man we need to ask god if god could do that to paul he can do it to you and me now you and i as we journey together with god as we walk with him, we need to ask God, God, the fire, the passion that Paul had in him, I need it. I need it. It's not that Paul did not have any weakness. It was not that, oh, he, he studied under the leadership of Gamaliel and he was the wisest then. No. That knowledge did not help Paul to do a great ministry, but the revelation that he received from the Lord, the intimate relationship that he had with Christ, is what is enabling him to do what he did, to write the revelation that he received in the New Testament, and to birth churches in all these places. It was not the work of a man. It was the work of God through a man. If God can do it through this one man, Paul, God can do it through you and me. One thing that God is expecting from us as we go through this session on revival, ask God, revive me that I can expand myself. I can go beyond my ability and capability. I can step out of my comfort zone. Lord, strengthen me. 
there is yes i agree that this is the one life that we have but in this one life god is god has given us a call and there is a purpose and we need to fulfill this call we need to fulfill this purpose how when we have a relationship with god it is a covenant relationship where we agree god you are i partner with you to do what you have called me to do nothing should stop us now the gender the color the strength the talents the skill the language nothing should stop us nothing stopped paul if god could minister through paul he can minister through each of us so we see when we go through the book of acts we see how paul and his team were ministered by the power of the holy spirit and they went uh, uh, doing signs and wonders and miracles and shared the gospel of jesus christ to the jews and to the gentiles the people who believed in jesus the people unbelievers they just went and reached the unreached So today God is asking us to do the same thing. Can you go and share the gospel, reach the unreached, love the unloved? We need to encourage ourselves. We need to get that spark of revival within us and we need to uh, we need to kindle that fire within us that we may step out. And this fire should be contagious. we see this revival fire been contagious in paul paul raised leaders like titus timothy and through them many other leaders were raised and they shared the love of god they helped paul in planting churches and nurturing them and nourishing them and making the church grow stronger in word and in spirit With that we will move on to Paul's second missionary journey, which covers the time period of AD forty nine to fifty two, and in the book of Acts we see that from Acts fifteen verse thirty six till Acts eighteen verse twenty two. So we see the conflict between Paul and Barnabas because of his nephew John Mark, when. Barnabas wanted John Mark to join in the second missionary journey, where for which Paul is not for it because he discontinued uh, uh, the journey with Paul and Barnabas in the first missionary journey, and because there was a dispute be between them, so Barnabas takes John Mark and goes the other way, and we see Paul. take up silas and he leaves from antioch and he goes to cilicia to strengthen the churches that he visited so from syria he goes to cilicia then he goes to derby the other places where he visited and now when he comes to derby and lystra here he finds timothy and timothy has been a young man who was uh, very young 17 years of age when he met paul timothy's father was a greek and his mother was a jew paul had paul had to get timothy circumcised because to raise him as a leader among the jews a leader uh, timothy must be circumcised only then the jewish people will accept his leadership so it was easy for timothy to be circumcised because his mom was a jewish believer and timothy grew in the word from a very young age through the help of his grandmother so with that we see um, you know so timothy serves alongside of paul and he learns the word and he learns how to grow in the word and also in the leadership of Paul and we see Paul move to different places from there. Not going into detail because we will be covering this in the third year in detail. The Book of Acts we will cover it in detail, and then we see uh, how uh, 
Paul goes to different places and he comes to the city of Ephesus, which was an uh, important city in Asia Minor and uh, one of the first of the greatest metropolis in Asia, where there were about 2,25,000 of population there. And this place was very famous for the Temple of Diana in Ephesus. This was the largest building and there were many people who were coming there as it was also a business center. And here we see Paul preached in the synagogue of Ephesus, but he did not stay very long at Ephesus at this time because he had planned to reach Jerusalem. But what happened? He met, he, uh, he met, uh, uh, he met Aquila and Priscilla. He, re he shared the word with them. They were almost prepared prepared by the Lord and uh, you know when Paul shared the gospel with them they received with a receptive art so Paul could train Aquila and Priscilla and he, he started a small community there and he left Aquila and Priscilla at Ephesus and he moved ahead to Jerusalem so what happened now Aquila and Priscilla met Paul is another leader at Ephesus and taught him the things of Lord Jesus and later sent Apollos to Corinth recommending him to the believers there. You see how the revival fire has been catch, caught by other people and the leaders have been raised. Now what happened? Did Apollos stop there? Apollos was a great blessing to the believers at Corinth. So Paul came back to Ephesus later and he accomplished some very important things there. And then we will move on to Paul's third missionary journey, which covers uh, the time period of AD 53 to AD 58 and from the book of Acts chapter 18 to Acts 21. So in Paul's third missionary journey, it lasted for about four years approximate and he covered he traveled about 2500 miles and on the first two journeys we see paul reached two new areas paul reached not two they were like new areas where he preached the gospel and he planted the church but on the third journey paul <coughs> did not go to any new areas, but he revisited the places which was covered in the first and second missionary journey to strengthen the believers and establish the church and raise leaders and, and build them strong. So this is what Paul did in the third missionary journey. So what we can learn from this is, first and two, Paul had the spire of revival, Though he faced a persecution, nothing stopped him. He went throughout the Mediterranean Sea, the port, and he, 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 he started uh, uh, building community of people, sharing the gospel, and he moved on. And nothing stopped him. No persecution could stop him from sharing what God had put in his heart. And in the second missionary journey, he went to some of the new places where he again established the communities there. And in the third journey, he covered almost all the places what he visited in the first and second, established the church, appointed the leaders, and now he's building uh, and he's strengthening the leaders so that the church can grow and be birthed into many places. Now what happened in AD 58 to 60? Paul visits to Jerusalem and it turned out to be a difficult time for him. So here he's been arrested. He's been arrested and Luke went to Jerusalem with Paul at the end of the third missionary journey where uh, when Paul was arrested in Jerusalem and he was imprisoned, we see uh, Luke visiting him. And uh, uh, he, he writes uh, with different experience. Whatever Paul has shared, he's writing it, his journey, he's, um, he's making a journal for Paul through the book of Acts. And then he reveals to us how Paul's journey was to Rome and what happens in the Roman imprisonment. And we see Paul's final years. 
that is from AD 63 to 67 in the uh, few, last few chapters of Acts and in Acts 28 30 we see that Paul's last epistle what happened at the Roman imprisonment and last days and this martyrdom has been revealed to us and we also see in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 to 22, we see Paul saying, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. And he very clearly says, he gets to know this is the end. And he says that, I have fought a good fight, and I've finished the race, and I've kept the faith. And finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. So here we see, even at this moment, Paul is encouraging each of us. As a leader, he's encouraging us, saying, do not give up. Move on till the end. And even in the end, he's saying, be diligent to come to me quickly. He's saying, there is a righteous judge, there's a crown of righteousness, there's a reward that is waiting for you from God. So don't give up in the process. Endure and go ahead. And in AD 66 and 68, we see that Paul was martyred. But then the gospel did not end there. The gospel just carried. The work of God was just carried. The fire of God was spreading. The leaders who were raised by Paul carried the word to the uttermost parts of the earth. The summary of Paul, the carrier of the move of God. The Apostle Paul ministered from 44 AD to 68 AD, at approximately about 20 to 24 years of ministry in his life. And he achieved greater things for God by the power of the Holy Spirit. So today, God is asking us, this one encounter of Paul, which birthed revival, which revived him and sparked a revival everywhere he went. If he was able to impact across the culture, creed, God can do it even in and through us. Paul impacted many cities, the marketplaces, and the people in the high place. Nothing stopped him. There was a kind of boldness and courage that he carried. And today God is asking the same Spirit of God that made Paul to go beyond his ability. The same Spirit of God is saying that I am with you. I'm enabling you. Move with the fire of God. Impact the world for him. Paul has written many epistles for us. Why? To strengthen us. If the Lord could use Paul, who was completely sold out for God, in a very powerful way, same thing, the same Spirit of God can use you and me. Just that we need to be available, we need to surrender ourselves, we need to make ourselves available. And God can do this again through you and me. God does not look at the outer appearance of a man, but God looks at the heart of a man. He looks at the heart. When no word can explain the heart of a man. God knows, God looks at the heart and He calls you. So let that heart be pleasing to God. Let our thoughts be pleasing to God. Let this be our prayer. Lord, give us a pure heart. The heart that yearns for more of you, more of your spirit. Keep that heart open. Keep that spirit open. Let us, uh, we can ask God, God, Press sin for the revival fire within me. And let's get ourselves prepared to welcome the mighty outpouring of God's Spirit in us. 
can we ask lord prepare me to minister to community to transform city state and people can i can i carry that spirit lord that can saturate people saturate people be saturated for god with that let's end this class with a word of prayer dear god i lift up each one in the class lord all the students of father on campus online and e learning lord i pray that you will help us to have this encounter which paul had lord encounter in a in a way that each of us can understand and experience your power that this spark of revival can spark us revive us so that we are the carrier of that revival fire and we carry and move to different parts of this place lord help us be the people who are saturated for god lord help us to carry the fire of god in and through us thank you lord i ask this in the name of jesus amen thank you so much for joining in today's session god bless thank you